Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Hello. Yes. Hi. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Hi. Hi. Melissa, you said about your pregnancy. <laughs> yes, it's very exciting. I also have two little ones, so it's keeping me busy. All right, here we go. The respiratory system. Okay, so in this session, we will go over what the respiratory system is, what makes up the respiratory system, and basically how it works. So first, what is the respiratory system? We know that it's made up of the lungs, and this system allows us to breathe. The lungs, which are the primary organs bringing oxygen, O2, into our bodies, this is known as inspiration or inhalation. Think of in with that inspiration, inhalation. Uh, we bring that oxygen in and the respiratory system also sends carbon dioxide, CO2, out of the body. This process is known as um, expiration or exhalation. There's a lot of different terms, but just kind of know these basics. Uh, breathing is, you know, the primary action for the respiratory system because our bodies need oxygen to survive. As you know, every living thing requires oxygen for survival. Humans specifically can live days without water and weeks without food, but we can only survive a few minutes without air. So once all the oxygen in our body is used up, it's converted into carbon dioxide. Too much carbon, di car too much carbon dioxide is bad. So the body needs to get rid of it. Um, and by doing this, there is an exchange of gases that occurs that keeps us running. This exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen, it's called respiration. So going forward, uh, let's talk about anatomy of the respiratory system and what are the parts of it? I'm gonna go down here, we got the anatomy. Pretty straightforward. So as you see in this photo, the respiratory system includes the nose, mouth, throat, voice box, windpipe, and the lungs. Air enters the respiratory system through the nose or the mouth. If it goes in the nostrils, which is also called the nares, the air is warmed and humidified. Tiny hairs called cilia protect the nasal passageways and other parts of the respiratory tract. With this cilia, uh, filters out dust and other particles that enter through the nose um, through the air that's breathed in. There's two openings of the airway, the nasal cavity and the mouth. Um, both of those openings meet at the pharynx or the throat, which is at the back of the nose and the mouth. So when you basically look in the mirror and open up your mouth, you look back, back there is pretty much the pharynx. The pharynx is mostly part of the digestive system, but it's also part of the respiratory system because, um, you know, it carries both food and air. At the bottom of the pharynx, this pathway divides into two. One is for food, and that will lead to the esophagus and leads to the, the stomach, and the other is for air. The epiglottis is a small flap of tissue um, that covers the air only passage when we swallow, which is the trachea. Um, so the epiglottis will keep food and liquid from going into the lungs. As you know, if food or liquid pass into the airway, you're going to choke. And we really don't want that to happen. So from there, we have the larynx, okay, down to the larynx or known as the voice box. Um, it's the top part of the air only pipe the trachea. This short tube contains a pair of vocal cords, which vibrate and make sounds when we talk. Moving on to the trachea or windpipe, it's the continuation of the airway below the larynx. The walls of the trachea are strengthened by stiff rings of cartilage to keep it open. And um, it's, if you feel your throat, kind of look up and feel your throat, you can kind of feel those rings. Um, your trachea is in the front and the esophagus is behind it. Uh, the trachea is also lined with cilia, similar to the nose, um, and it sweeps fluids and for foreign particles out of the airway so um, that they stay out of the lungs. At the bottom end of the trachea, it divides into left and right air tubes called bronchi. Um, these connect to the lungs. 
Within the lungs, the bronchi branch into smaller bronchi and even smaller tubes called bronchioles. Bronchioles end in tiny air sacs called alveoli. And this is where the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide actually takes place. Each person has hundreds um, of millions of alveoli in their lungs. And this network of alveoli, bronchioles, and bronchi, it's known as the bronchial tree. So just looking at this um, diagram here, you see how the trachea breaks off into the left and right, the bronchi, and then bronchioles. And, and at the end of those little branches is where the alveoli um, live. So now we're in the lungs. The lungs um, contain an elastic tissue that allow them to inflate and deflate uh, without losing its shape. Um, there's something called pulmonary surfac surfactant. It's a chemical, it consists of chemical compounds that line the alveolar surfaces of the lungs and it helps keep the lungs inflated and prevents them from collapsing. The lungs are also covered um, by a thin lining called pleura. And that forms a two-layered membrane that cushions the lungs and reduces friction between the lungs and the chest cavity, also known as the uh, rib cage. So basically there are things in there that keep the lungs to remain in the shape of this diagram. And without um, you know, these elastic tissues, without the pulmonary surfactant, you know, the lung, lungs can just collapse and they're not gonna work properly. Guys, and I want to uh, stop Melissa for a second. If you guys have any questions on this as she's going through uh, the different topics, um, feel free to put them into the chat and we'll uh, try and stop and answer any of those questions. So I think as we kind of go through it, there might there's definitely going to be some questions that come up. So feel free to stop and uh, throw those questions out at any point or if you want clarification on anything. As you know, um, or should know, uh, the human body has two lungs, as seen in this diagram. Um, and each, the right lung and the left lung, they vary in size and weight. The right lung, which is larger and heavier, has three lobes and the left lung has two lobes. Um, so finally, we have the chest cavity, um, also known as a thorax. It's basically an airtight box that houses the bronchial tree, lungs, heart, and other structures. Uh, the top and the sides of the thorax are formed by the ribs and they're attached by muscles. And the bottom is formed by a large muscle called the diaphragm. The chest walls form a protective cage around the lungs and other contents of the chest ca cavity. So they just, it's just protecting all of those fragile structures inside our chest. And it's, it's pretty strong. Uh, one more thing to keep in mind, the respiratory organs can be divided into the upper and lower respiratory tract. So the upper respiratory tract includes the nasal cavity, pharynx, larynx, and the lower respiratory tract includes the trachea, bronchus, and lungs, and everything within the lungs. So if you've ever had a cold or a respiratory illness, you may have heard the um, physician refer to it as, you know, upper respiratory illness or a lower respiratory illness, like a pneumonia, that's an infection in your lungs, that's going to be a lower respiratory illness. Something more like, um, uh, sorry, uh, on the tip of my tongue, something like laryngitis, you know, that's a little bit, that's a bit higher. That's going to be an upper respiratory. Okay. Melissa, I never heard of, I'm sorry to interrupt, because I never heard of a cough reflex before. I know about it, like an acid reflex, a GERD, because I have that myself. And I think that's like something where damaging your um, esophagus, your lower esophageal uh, reflex, your lower esophageal splinter. Yeah, so... So, um, you know, like an acid reflux, that, that's with the digestive system. So that's going to be part of the es esophagus, uh, which is the tube that when you swallow, food and drink goes down the esophagus. And there's a sphincter that opens up and allows that food and drink to go into the stomach. Oftentimes people will have um, the sphincter could um, kind of regurgitate the, the acids and the food and stuff can go back up the, tr the esophagus or the sphincter isn't as strong enough. So it doesn't close fully. And that can cause, um, that acid reflux, um, sensation. And, uh, and again, that's not part of the respiratory system that has nothing to do with the trachea. Okay. Um, so, uh, Yasmin had a question. What are the functions of internal and eternal intercostals? 
and how do they relate to the inspiration and expiration? So we're actually going to get into um, inspiration, expiration, and all that type of stuff. Um, um, basically, breathing in, breathing out, it's all muscular, um, which I'm going to talk about in a little while. That's the diaphragm is all part of that. Um, the muscles that are attached from the lungs, the chest cavity, um, everything kind of plays a role into that. So just bear with me. We'll get into that a little bit more. Okay, so we'll get to that. Um, and then the last question was, what do you mean by two lobes? Um, okay, so there's, um, so the right lung, um, I guess it's not really in this photo here, but the right lung has three lobes. So think of it um, basically, oh, let me use this. Basically, um, here's the right lung. Think of it pieced into three different sections. So you have the right upper lobe, the right middle lobe, and then there's going to be the right lower lobe. Um, and that's more for diagnostic purposes. For example, if someone has, um, you know, pneumonia, you know, they can, you'll get a, a chest x-ray and the doctors can look at it and they will be able to see where in the lung there are opacities, which basically mean where the infection in the lung is. Um, that in for diagnostic purposes, I could say, oh, the uh, right lower lobe has the infection. That's where the pneumonia is mostly. And the left lung over here has two lobes. So it's basically just sort of cut in half. And again, the right lung is a little bit bigger, three lobes, left lung is just how we've evolved and that's how our anatomy is. Is it because the heart is on that side? Possibly the, the heart is sort of mostly in the middle of the chest, slightly off to the left. So yes, that could definitely play a role in that. Um, again, they're not attached exactly, you know, they're not anatomically attached to each other where they're more attached by, um, veins and arteries and whatnot. So, but yes, it, you know, maybe over as we've evolved that our, our heart has made more room and the lung has adjusted for, um, that space. Okay, cool. Thanks. And we'll go over the, we'll review breathing in this, right? Obviously. This yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going to we'll get into that. Okay. So now that we talked about the anatomy, there is a question. Um, well, let me just go over these photos for you. Um, so here we have the trachea, breaks off the bronchi, bronchioles, and then down here breaks down a little bit smaller bronchioles and then the alveoli. They're kind of like little sacs. All right, so we have a question here. So which uh, you can also in the chat type in A, B, C, or D, and which one you think is the answer. Which organ uses hairs to filter out particles that try to enter the lungs? A, alveoli, B, bronchus, C, larynx, D, nose. D, D, all right, I think we have consensus here. Let's check it. That is correct. Um, as I mentioned, there's little cilia, little tiny hairs that filter out particles. You know, they're not gonna, they're not gonna filter out, um, I don't know, say a bug flies in your nose. It's not going to filter out that, but you know, pollen, all that type of stuff, um, sort of microscopic, it tries to filter all that stuff out. And that's kind of the first line of protection um, for our lungs. Okay, so moving on. Now that we discussed what the respiratory system is and its anatomy, let's talk about how the lungs and the respiratory system actually function, the physiology part. So the cells in our bodies need oxygen to stay alive. Carbon dioxide, which is CO2, is made in our bodies as cells do their jobs, all while using up oxygen. The lungs and the respiratory system allow oxygen in the air to be taken into the body, while also letting the body get rid of carbon dioxide in the air that's breathed out. So how does this action of breathing occur? 
when you breathe in the diaphragm, which is the primary muscle for inspiration, breathing in, moves downward toward the abdomen and the rib muscles pull the ribs upward and outward. This makes the chest cavity bigger and pulls air through the nose or the mouth into the lungs. So that's breathing in. Then we have breathing out, which is exhalation. The diaphragm moves upward and the chest walls, chest wall muscles relax, causing the chest cavity to get smaller and push air out of the respiratory system through the nose and the mouth. At this time, the diaphragm returns to its dome shape that lies underneath the chest cavity and the rib cage uh, moves back to its natural position. Um, and you can kind of, um, feel, feel this. If you just sit there and kind of take a deep breath, you can, how you can notice how everything kind of expands. And when you breathe out, everything kind of pushes out. That's all the muscles working together there. Okay. So the respiratory system, it can be functionally divided into two parts. These are the two parts here. Before we get to that, Melissa, um, someone had a question. The pharynx is the one that filters out liquid, right? Or is that the trachea? Um, so the pharynx is that location. Let me go back to here. So the pharynx is back here behind, behind the nasal cavity and the oral cavity. Once you get down here, there's going to be, it starts to, it branches off into the trachea and the esophagus. The trachea, which is the windpipe, has a little flap uh, called the epiglottis. And that doesn't necessarily filter out, but it blocks any food or water from going into your lungs. Um, there isn't really a filter per se for liquid or food, um, if that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and once, once, the, once that part branches off, you have the, the trachea and the esophagus. And the esophagus is just, digestive system it has nothing to do with the, the respiratory system. It's just that sometimes you can swallow air and then you might burp and that, but that doesn't really affect anything with breathing. Okay. So let's go back down here. Okay. So, um, we're going to talk about how the respiratory system can be functionally divided into two parts. So you have the air conducting portion, which is when air is delivered to the lungs. Basically, that's breathing. Air is going in and out. Um, this region is consisting of the upper and the lower respiratory tract, specifically the larynx, trachea, bronchi, and bronchioles. Then we have the gas exchange portion, um, which takes place between the air and the blood. So this is when you know we're talking about how we breathe in oxygen and the body uses up that oxygen and the oxygen that is used up is tr turned into carbon dioxide and the body needs to get rid of that. So how do we get those gases from the lungs to the body, to the body, to the lungs and out of the body? So that's this gas exchange portion. Um, and this portion it includes the lungs, alveoli and capillaries. Okay. And that's pretty much here. The gas exchange is going to happen mainly in those alveoli because that's where those tiny little capillaries, if you remember from the cardiovascular system, um, this is where, remember in the cardiovascular system, we have oxygen rich blood and oxygen poor blood. So oxygen poor blood is going to the heart through the vena cava. Um, and then it's gonna go through the right atrium, right ventricle, goes to the lungs through the pulmonary artery. And that's, once it goes into the pulmonary artery, that's where that exchange happens. And then the oxygen poor blood is gonna go through the pulmonary artery to the lungs, do the exchange and it gets breathed out. The oxygen rich stuff is gonna come from the pulmonary vein into the left artery. Um, I'm sorry, the left atrium and into the heart, into the left ventricle and out through the aorta to be circulated through the blood. I have a question, That's Melissa. I know you said earlier um, different, like different type of um, uh, 
inflammation or different type of um, sickness affects the upper respiratory tract that you mentioned earlier. So if the alveoli, alveoli was damaged, would that be like a sign for someone who's sick with emphysema or which type? Yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of, there's a bunch of different um, infections and illnesses and everything that can affect the lungs, um, even smoking, you know, smoking a cigarette or even vaping, things like that can, when it's inhaled, it's causing damage to those, to those alveoli. So some people who have um, lung damage, it's mostly going to be, um, well, depending on what it's from, it's going to be within those deeper portions of the lungs, causing the lungs to not work so well. Um, you know, sometimes people can have, um, uh, an inf a less deeper infection per se. So, you know, like I said, like laryngitis or bronchitis, you know, that's more, more within, you know, bronchi bronchitis is more with like the inflammation with the bronchi area. So that's, that's not necessarily going to affect the gas exchange and, you know, oxygen going into the body, but that's just more of it's going to make breathing a little bit difficult. Um, oh, another one is asthma. That's a big one. Um, that's, that's basically when there's an inflammation of those, the airway, you know, the, the, the trachea, the bronchial, the bronchi and making breathing a little bit difficult. And that's what inhalers are for. There's, um, inhaled steroids and they kind of open things up to help make breathing easier. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Okay. So we, we just spoke about the air conducting portion and the gas exchange portion. So every few seconds with each inhalation, air fills a large portion of the millions of alveoli deep in those lungs. In a, in a process called diffusion, oxygen moves from the alveoli to the blood through the capillaries, which are tiny little blood vessels that line the alveolar walls. Once the oxygen is in the bloodstream and it's circulated through the body via the cardiovascular system, which I mentioned before, oxygen gets picked up by the hemoglobin in the red blood cells. This oxygen rich blood then flows back to the heart um, into the left atrium, and then it pumps through the arteries to oxygen hungry tissues throughout the body. So this is just a ever, this is always happening. You know, like our body is using oxygen, we're making carbon dioxide and this filtering process is happening, happening constantly. Uh, so in the tiny capillaries of the body tissues, oxygen is freed from the hemoglobin and then it moves into the cells. Carbon dioxide, which is made by the cells as they do their work, basically they're using up the oxygen they were given before, it moves out of the cells into the capillaries. And this is where most of it dissolves into the plasma of the blood. Blood, blood rich in carbon dioxide will then return to the heart via the, the vena cava, the veins. And then from the heart, this blood is pumped to the lungs where carbon dioxide passes into the alveoli to be exhaled. And I you know, kind of went over this a little bit before. So one last thing for this section, the respiratory system does work closely with both the cardiovascular system and the nervous system to maintain blood gas and pH homeostasis. So homeostasis is that balance. You never want things to be too high, too low, because things get all a um, little bit wacky. So the body must um, regulate the blood pH levels. When there is too much carbon dioxide in the blood, it becomes acidic. Um, that's when the pH value is too low. If there's not enough carbon dioxide in the blood, it will be too alkaline, uh, which means the pH value will be too high. Um, and keep in mind, carbon dioxide must be closely monitored because if, if there's something going on with their lungs, someone's lungs, and the carbon dioxide is building up in the body and the body is not getting rid of it, that is not good. We don't want that. Okay, so... Um, we have another question here. 
Can you explain? We got a lot of answers coming in for this. Um, so this is kind of one of those cool questions in the online course. It's a little bit different from the book. Uh, the book really just has kind of that straight multiple choice A, B, C, D answers. But you guys will see as we go through the lesson, there's a lot of questions like this. That's like check all that apply or mix and matching or drag and dropping type questions. So uh, just to point those out, those kind of it makes a difference when you're studying to not be going straight through ABCD uh, type questions. So a lot of people are saying. I didn't, I didn't read the question, but oh, please everyone question. can see yeah. it. Yeah, um, everybody can see it. Go what ahead. are the structures that are directly involved in gas exchange? Basically everything that we just talked about um, with that exchange of the oxygen and the carbon dioxide, where, what are the structures that are directly evolved, involved in that exchange? A, alveolus, B, bronchial, C, pharynx, uh, D, trachea, and, and or E, capillaries. Okay, so let's check the answers. We have a lot of... Got a lot of A and D, a lot of A and D. Uh, some folks got E thrown in there. The alveolus and capillaries. Um, okay. Yeah, everybody's pretty much A and E, and for the most part, we got a few B, D, Zs thrown in there as well, but. Um, okay. All right, lay it on us. And then Nikki Adams has a question. So I'm going to check alveolus, capillaries, and check that one. That's correct. So, like we just talked about before, the structures directly involved in gas exchange. That's you know, once you get into the alveoli here and the capillaries, so the oxygen gets into the alveoli and then it does that diffusion with the capillaries and goes into the bloodstream. So that's, you know, directly involved in gas exchange. I always want to read the question. What is it asking specifically? The bronchial, the pharynx, the trachea, go back up here, pharynx, trachea. There's not you know, they're bringing in the air and taking out the air, but that's not where the gas exchange specifically, the gases of oxygen and carbon dioxide are taking place. Um, I guess you can get a little bit um, confused with the bronchi or the bronchioles because those are more of the branches, but just remember the branches are leading down into those alveoli, alveolus, and trying to get to that deeper, want to connect with the cardiovascular system. So it's much deeper, the alveoli, alveolus, and the capillaries. Okay, so, um, okay, we just did that question. Okay, so moving on to the mechanics of respiration. Um, it, it's basically similar to what we just talked about. Um, and it's just really important to know the terms, so you know, you know, what, you know, you're reading when you, you know, are taking the test. So as you can see in this image, um, the process of gas exchange between the outside air and the body is called respiration. Um, and it, occur it occurs on two levels, internal respiration and external respiration. So here, let me leave it right here. Uh, okay. So we have external respiration. It occurs between the lungs and blood. Um, when you inhale, alveoli fill with oxygen through diffusion. Oxygen content is much higher than carbon dioxide levels at this time. And while, the alve while in the alveoli region, blood becomes oxygen rich. Once oxygenated, um, once the blood that's in there becomes oxygenated, it leaves the lungs um, through the pulmonary vein and travels to the left side of the heart where it's pumped into circulation. Then there's the internal respiration and that occurs between the blood and the tissues. So that's, so think of external is, you know, it happens within the lungs and the internal is once it's beyond the, the heart into the body. So it's, it occurs between the blood and the tissues. Once the blood enters um, into the circulation, it, you know, reaches those capillaries. Oxygen diffuses through the capillaries into the cells. Carbon dioxide will diffuse from the cells into the capillaries, kind of like a switch. And because carbon dioxide content is higher than oxygen content in the blood at this point, it's called oxygen-poor blood. And then this oxygen-poor blood will travel to the right side of the heart 
and it moves through the pulmonary circuit and back into the lungs where it, it's removed from the body through external respiration, this part here. Right. And Valerie says she got this on her test. Oh, okay. so, so she would say to definitely know the definition. Okay. That is helpful. Okay. So let's do this next question. What happens during internal respiration? Air is inhaled into the body. Oxygen-rich blood travels to the heart. Air moves into and out of the pulmonary circuit where oxygen is exchanged for carbon dioxide in circulation. A, B, C, or D. Getting a few Ds. I have a B. Okay. When someone was asking if the info will also be posted on Instagram, uh, we do post a lot on Instagram. You're probably going to see more in the Facebook group than on Instagram, uh, just because it's easier to post documents and things like that on Facebook than it is on Instagram. But uh, anything that we can put on Instagram, we do. So you can definitely check us out and follow us there. But uh, the Facebook group will be the better place. All right, so it looks like everybody had D. So let's do the big reveal. That is correct, wow. right? You guys didn't even need to show up tonight. You already know, you knew the answers. So um, oxygen is exchanged for carbon dioxide in circulation. So I think we're doing internal respiration, which is the deeper, the deeper part of this exchange, um, part of respiration. Okay. I want to point out too, if you look at this answer explanation, Melissa actually just spent like several weeks rewriting these answer explanations to be, have much more detail in them and expanded on. Uh, we originally wrote a lot of these questions were in the study guide book. When you have the book, you can't put two or three paragraph answers for everything. They have to be like two or three sentences. So that was a lot of feedback we got from a lot of people like yourselves that were wanting longer answer explanations. So, uh, so we wrote much longer, more in-depth answer explanations and not just for science and anatomy and physiology, but for every topic, every subject. So you guys will see that if you have the, uh, any of our online courses, um, you'll see all that. But just wanted to point that out. Okay, so that basically finishes this um, this section. Um, just to yeah, throw out those bullets. I mean, those those are the so important yeah, topics to review. Just do a few, you know, just go review. Um, uh, let's see. So, re respiratory organs are anatomically divided into the upper and lower tract, like we mentioned before. Breathing is a mechanical process that in, that provides oxygen, which is essential for all living things to survive. The respiratory system supplies oxygen to the body and removes carbon dioxide. It works with the cardiovascular system to move this, the oxygen and the carbon dioxide throughout the blood. Internal respiration involves gas exchange between blood and body tissues. The external respiration is a gas exchange that happens between the blood and the lungs. And blood pH levels are regulated by the respiratory cardiovascular and the nervous systems. Okay, and here's a little diagram. So here's the oxygen, we're gonna breathe it in. We're gonna inspire inspiration into the lungs. Then we're gonna red blood cells transfer oxygen to the organs. So once you know we, we have that inspiration, it's gonna go all the way into the alveoli, do that, that gas exchange. It's gonna go through the circulatory system, go to the blood cells go to the organs so they can function. Um, and then it's just gonna basically send that carbon dioxide backwards, back the way it came from, because it's not oxygen anymore. And then we expirate or expire the carbon, carbon dioxide out into the world. Cool. All right, uh, Nikki was asking if there are any other videos on math, reading and English sections. Um, I'm not sure if you meant in like the online course, there's videos for every topic um, for, tutoring study sessions, if that's what you meant. Uh, we have mostly been doing A&P, but we are in the process of 
kind of scheduling out uh, these types of group study sessions for math, reading, English sections. So those will be coming soon. You'll, you'll see announcements in your email and in the Facebook group. Uh, a good study method for everybody is called active recall. And what that means is kind of doing, and you guys should do this like right now, what you study a lesson, right? Like the respiratory system. And then after you close your book or, or you're done with that lesson, you want to go and quiz yourself right after. And it makes your brain like recall all the information that you just learned. If you were to jump off this call or close your book or be done with the uh, lesson module, go to bed and not kind of try and recall some of the information you just learned, you start to forget a lot of this material much faster. So by immediately doing questions, and we kind of designed the lesson modules this way too, so that there's lesson or questions within the lesson module. Um, there's an end of section test, and then there now there's this test bank. So it's all designed so that you can really just keep drilling yourself so you can recall the information you just learned. Um, another kind of thing you can do is like, study the lesson, close the book, close the course, and just write down or take notes um, on a Word document or something and try and type out like everything that you can remember uh, from what you just studied for the past hour. And then, and then you can go back in the book or the course and kind of see what you missed. But just doing that makes your brain recall all the information for a little bit longer and actually makes your brain work. And you will remember a lot more of that information than just study and close your book and go do whatever you were going to do. So um, we made a whole video about that and it kind of ties into like making study schedules and how to do that kind of stuff. But yeah, so we're, we're pretty happy um, that we are able to add that in and we've been working on that for the past few weeks. So hopefully that'll help you guys out. Thank you. And also understand that I know it's your first time taking it, but understand not just the function, as he says, not just name the parts of it or just know what to do. No what will happen if it doesn't work properly. And that's what I asked Ms. Ms. Melissa, Ms. Melissa about the emphysema, because I knew I had a question about that, because there's a breakdown of voli, the air sac, and that causes a shortness of breath. So they would ask something like that. They ask me, everyone is different or whatnot. I don't know what they'll ask you, but I know I had a question of that, if that would have a um, dysfunction. So you have to know what would happen if something wasn't working properly. And um, and I know Ms. Melissa, you said the um, circulatory uh, is uh, um, close related with the respiratory too. So we talk about um, oxygenated, deoxygenated blood. You would also need to know the um, the blood flow of the um, in the heart and the body and all that, as Ms. Melissa um, and said in the beginning. Cool, thank you. That's very helpful. Thanks for adding that's that in. That's a previous um, test taker. Yeah. Uh, a few other questions folks asked, is there a Smart Edition app? There is an app. Uh, we're actually working on it all day today. It is just about to get submitted to the app stores. So right within the next week or two, there will be a mobile app that you can use the whole course on. Uh, so look out for that. We'll announce when that is ready. Um, how long do you have access to the course? Is it lifetime or a specific time frame? Uh, the course does not expire. So you have it for as long as you need it. There's no monthly cost or anything like that. The last uh, respiratory question, um, do you have to know the different parts of the humerus, such as head of the humerus, et cetera? Um, that's, you know, that's a bone, so it's a skeletal system. Um, I would say, you know, know the anatomy, know what the humerus is, know what parts of the bone, what's, what is the head of the bone, what is, um, you know, what, what, if you cut the bone in half, what is it going to look like? What is it made up of? So I would know the basics of, um, the, the bone structures and the specific bones. Um, there's a lot of bones in the body. There's a lot of really, really tiny bones in the body, but you know, definitely the humerus is a, is a big one. So definitely know, um, those more prominent bones and the parts of it. Yes, absolutely. Because you never know. You never know what you're going to see on the tests. Cool. All right. So that covered quite a bit. Um, and I'm really happy. Like, I think most of the people are still hanging on here. Uh, and we are just about up on an hour. So that's about the time we had. So, I mean, if there's any other questions, feel free to throw them out, guys. Other than that, um, we all really appreciate Melissa's uh, time and you know, she's five months pregnant, so hopefully we'll have her for another two or three months to kind of help us out. And then I think she's going to check out for a little bit uh, when little baby Wynn comes along. Um, Thank you. And also, 
also for your tests, once you do them, it doesn't disappear. You know, like the ATAB website, when you buy the practice test and you finish it twice, it disappears. Is yours, when we finish, is it still there? Yeah, the, oh, the yeah. online course never expires. So you have it for as long as you need it. And all of the practice tests, you can take as many times as you like. You oh, have eight of them. So I wouldn't expect you to take all eight, five or 10 times. But um, if you go through all eight of those and you want to go back and start over again, you can definitely do that. And then, of course, you have the question bank uh, questions as well. Have a good night and we'll see you guys in the group and look out for uh, more good stuff to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Good luck, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you.